You may be seated. I'll, they're getting me trained. I'll just move over here. I'll pass it through, do his thing. Oh, how many weeks did it take, people? <laughs> Years? Wow. Wow. Just saying. Aren't we happy to be in the presence of God? Yes. Amen. I always enjoy just seeing people at the altars worshiping. It just blesses me. So, hey, I just want to encourage you guys and uh, want to tell you thank you, thank you, thank you for all those who labored yesterday. How many are sore today? Um, I did not, was not able to get up out of bed like I wanted to, but I want to tell you guys thank you. Um, we got a lot of work done. We got it looks clean. It looks nice. Uh, thank you to those who sacrificed on uh, our new bus um what is that? Our a trailer. 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 Our trailer. 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 So our trailer, thank it you. Has thank no you. motor. And thank you for those who painted. Yes. Good job. Jenny with the G and Ted. They did a great job out here. It was awesome. Uh, you know. Pulled up mulch. Jerry's out there cutting stuff. And Zach and Cam. And uh, the, the youth were all doing something. They were all pulling weeds. <laughs> Eat they would pick up the rocks. You're, you can think the kids for your car is not hitting over those little rocks anymore. No, we were just, we had a great work day. So I want to say a huge thank you to everybody. everybody yeah. And uh, this next announcement I saved for last week because I'm really excited about. We are having glad timers again. May 7th. Praise well, the Lord. What's the, what's the age bracket for glad timers? Why don't you look at the man over there? <laughs> don't look at me. It's endless. Endless? No, but I mean, what's the start? He wants to know where it starts at. Is it 50 or is it 55? 50. It's 50. Well, I've been in it so long, I couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Betty and these guys were all like, well, what's the age? You're the only one in it. And I'm like, hey, oh. I'm so old I don't remember. I'm wow. guessing you guys are probably wishing you were here right now because the interaction is a lot of fun around here. Right. Right. So, uh, right. hey. It is a great Friday night. It is fun. It is it's awesome food. Yeah. Well, um, fellowship. So, getting that together. Fellowship. You know, hanging out. Occasionally we play bingo. Bingo. Yes. Yeah, you have to be 55 or older to win that one. Usually Kenny wins. Kenny wins. Yeah, candy bars and stuff. And I, I try to impress on them that they need to tie on those candy bars. <laughs> Just saying. To whose office? Your office? Hello. Oh, uh, the church. You know, and it has to, yeah. I think we need to get to the Word wow. of God, so here we go. Wow. Pastor, why don't you just come and take this pulpit back for good? <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, Pastor Drew. Man. I want to give a big thank you to uh, Betty for coordinating all the stuff that she did yesterday. That was, uh, that's, that's the hardest job right there, you know? And then uh, Denny and Skip and uh, Jesus. And I called him Jose yesterday and he didn't even say anything. <laughs> <laughs> when I got home, my wife was like, ugh, you just think Jesus. And I don't know, I, I, when I think of Jesus, I feel like he had more hair. <laughs> The picture's always showing you with more hair. He's, just, he's like, dude, I am not sitting in the front ever again. Man, what? It was just a great team, and uh, we had a great time, and had pizza, and uh, just, had, just had fun. It was a, a blessing. Not only did we get all of those things done, but over on the Ed Building and over on the Old Sanctuary, there are brand new shingles. Brand new shingles on all of those things, uh, and I think uh, seven new uh, sheets of uh, plywood on that building over there. We had some sag, some rot, some stuff that just is fixed now. Isn't that great? Amen. And uh, we, we have two rooftop units here in, in our church that uh, one of them works. And... Uh, the board finally just said, hey, dude, we just need to get those fixed. We got bids and stuff. And so we have, uh, we called the guy and said, do it. Do it. And uh, $37,000 later, they'll show up in a while. But you know what? Here's the deal. God knew that was going to be that need. 
And you guys, through all of COVID, I was just sharing this testimony with somebody yesterday. Through COVID, you guys have been faithful to give, to tithe, and to just be faithful. You know, even when you weren't coming to church, you're like, you know what, we're going to keep blessing. And so, it's not some churches would have to take a loan out, take a note out, but let's we'll write a check. We're not. That's good. We're not. Okay, we don't have tons of money, but I'm just saying, God bless us. And he knew, he knows what's coming. And you know what? Those same principles work in your life. You know, but part of the reason there's money there is because the board, we've been pretty frugal. We've, some people call it cheap. We don't want to hear those negative words. So we're going we're gonna to look at Luke chapter 8 today. And last week we were talking about the four principles about sowing and reaping. And some of you are smiling. Because, how many of you got all four of those uh, principles last week, wrote all four of those principles down? <coughs> See, there were several people, and you probably just knew them from before, but there were several people who were like, yeah, you only gave us three. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, William, thank you. I didn't need an amen right there. <laughs> so... My wife was helping me. She goes, you can't reap until you sow. You have to sow. That was the one we didn't talk about last week. You have to sow before you can reap. And then you're going, so you have to sow. It's still like this. You have to sow before you can reap. You can look at that ground all day long. But if you, until you put seed in, only weeds are going to grow. Secondly, you're going to reap what you sow. Kind words. Generous blessings. Those kind of things. You're going to reap where you sow. So, whose lives are you sowing in? And the fourth one was, you're going to reap more than you sow. Yeah. I asked somebody this week, how many, how many kernels are on a cob of corn. Any of you remember? You guys are good. 816 rows. 800 and many. Good. If you plant good seed, see, my grandfather sold seed corn. Pioneer. And he's, and my uncle as well, and they said, hey, you got to plant the right kind. You can't plant those cheap, cheap ones. You got to plant that good pioneer. And uh, so, planting good seed, but to, this morning I want to adjust the vantage point because we've talked we talked about uh, planting seed last week. I want to go to Luke, and actually the same story is in Matthew chapter 13, it's in Mark chapter 4, and we're going to go to Luke chapter 8, and we want to talk about dirt. I want to talk about dirt. Did you know that you are made out of dirt? I know. If you wash too much, you just go away. It says that he took the dirt and he breathed the breath of life. He formed Adam and breathed the breath of life into him. That out of the dirt we came. Out of the soil. And Jesus spoke in parables. They were stories that were connected to things that people would understand, and uh, and he would share them. So I want to read out of uh, Luke chapter eight, beginning at verse five. And you know, and it's springtime. It's springtime. It's time to sow your seed. It's time to to do that thing. However, I talked to my farmer this this week because some of you are still getting there. I talked to him. He stopped by my house and he's telling me I got more cows. And I said, so did you plant anything? He said, nope. The soil is too cold. The soil's not ready. I put the seed in there, but until, until there's some heat units, it's not going to grow. And so there's no sense planting it until it's time. I thought, oh, okay. Huh. You know, you factor all this. You're like, I'm preaching on soil this week. So got to be, be got to have some fire there. Got to have some heat. So it says, a farmer went out to sow his seed. 
As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky soil, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. Heavenly Father, Lord, help us this morning. Help us to hear your word. Lord, help us to understand your word, to apply your word. Lord, our heart and our passion is to be good soil and to produce a crop 30, 60, and 100 fold. Lord, we just come to you, Lord, in your name. Amen. I want to talk to you about this parable. It was interesting because in all three passages, there's a window where, where things happen and he talked and then and they were like, Master, we don't really understand this parable. We don't understand what you're talking about here. We don't, we don't get it. And so he explained to them in verse 11, we find this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so that they may not believe and be saved. So that they, And I want to stop there because I want to say that it is God's will for all people to be saved. Amen. Amen. Jesus died for everyone that all may be saved. And Peter it talks about that God is not slow in keeping his promises, but he is patient, wanting everyone to be saved. Amen. That's the, the heart, that's the, that's the heart of God. So as we go through this passage, we're going to look a little bit at that, but understand that the underlying thing is God wants everyone to be saved. Amen. Right? Yeah. yeah. You guys got people you don't like it. That, that's it, isn't it? You're like, I don't know. Do we really want them to get saved? Yes, God does. He yeah. loves everybody. Yes. So it goes on. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word of joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns is those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Produce a crop. So I want to take a look. First of all, I want to take a look at the hard soil, at the path. You know, I, as I think about hard soil and path, I think about my gravel road. Yeah. That thing is packed like a rock right now. You know, they've got the rock and all the stuff, and then uh, we've got the RV place out there, so you got all these big rigs going in and out of there, and it is almost like cement. So... Going back to the sewing, though, you, you see the tractors today. They got all these, these boxes you put seed and stuff in. How many of you guys, when you plant grass on your, your yard, you got a little thing that you push with the wheel in it? Mm -hmm. Does that? See, I just want to say that I'm a little more spiritual than you guys <laughs> because I still use the bag, and I'm like, I'm plinging it out. I'm plinging it out because... It makes me feel like Jesus. You know? <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's, it's, that, it's that. You're just you're just spreading the seed. You know, the wind is blowing, and you're trying to gauge the wind to get it to all go in the right spots. And so you're planting that seed, and some of it falls on hard ground. The Word of God. And so I want to talk about, first of all, the hard ground. The hard ground that, that there are people who have hardened their heart and hardened their mind toward the message of God. They, they, there's a hardness. When you come to them and you share with them, or they come to church and I preach the word, and maybe you're here and you showed up and you're, you don't know why you're here and you're just like, ah, I'm here, I'm just going through the motions, but I don't care what he says, I'm not going to listen, and I don't care because you allowed Satan to harden your heart. A hard heart. It is, it's like trying to plant seed on that paved road or, or that gravel road. It's not going to grow. It's not going to grow because there's just a hardness. So when I say 
What kind of soil are you? Are you open to receiving the word? In fact, sometimes when there's a certain kind of the, the things just happen in a certain way where there's rain and stuff and then it gets really dry and the soil will get so hard and the, and the farmers will go out and they will cultivate that. They'll go and break up the hardness. Even when you're planting grass and that stuff, you kind of got to go out and you, you break it up so the seed can get in. So, hard. Have you allowed Satan, perhaps, perhaps you've had people in your life that were a part of church or called themselves Christians who did you wrong. And it hard. See, when we get hurt to protect ourselves, we put up walls and we become, we become hard. Because we don't want to be hurt. Have you, have you ever done that? You put up a wall? You're like, okay. In fact, when certain people hurt you, you put up a wall in your relationship with them. You will never, ever let yourself be vulnerable to them again because they will hurt you. And there's a wall. There's a hardness. And sometimes we do that to God when God didn't do anything wrong. The people around us maybe did something wrong. The, the, the other Christians. And so we blame God for what other people did and we become hard and we miss out because you're, you're just not, not open to receiving at all. So, does God need to run his cultivator over you? I don't know. As dirt, does dirt have feelings? Because you can just see that, that cultivator going over there and the dirt going, ow, ow, ah, uh, ow. But when you're hard, Satan comes and steals it right out. He steals it right. And, and it never even germinates. It never takes place. Secondly, the shallow, rocky soil. You read all three different passages and you, and you begin to see it. So there was other seed and it was scattered and it was kind of a rocky place. A have you seen the pictures of like the Grand Canyon and places like that where there are these trees growing out of the stinking rock? And you're like, how do they even do that? How do they grow there? But as I, as I look at what Jesus had to say, so here's what happened with the rocky soil. They came to church, they heard the message, they came forward and they got right with God. They took those steps. They took those steps. Rocky soil. When you're going through the country, do you ever see like piles of rock beside a farmer's field? Do you know why that is? Because rocky soil hinders production and breaks equipment. So farmers will pay young people to go out and take, and, and you know, did you know those rocks, new ones up here every year? <laughs> every year there's new rocks. That farmer's going over there and he's like, huh, more rocks. I, I just, uh, my friend Ray, when we were pastoring and, and, uh, and Carol, he, he, he was a, he's a farmer up there and uh, Lots of rocks in his field up by Lake City, and he hired my son to pick up rocks. How many of you would like to pick up rocks? Yeah, you're thinking, no, that's not a good plan. However, I'm just saying, he also hired this Rachel Davis girl. I don't know if he was matchmaking or what was going on there. But when you start a relationship picking up rocks, it's all easy after that. <laughs> and they're, Dan and Rachel are married. Got four kids. They're off in India. And uh, keep praying for them. They've been just having some you know, health stuff going on. So keep praying for them. But uh, what are the rocks in your life that hinder the seed from growing? You go back to the hardness one right off the bat is unforgiveness. So there's big rocks in your life that hinder the seed from growing.
from you becoming that new person, that, that godly person. So there's some rocks and some stuff that you have to go through. And sometimes we pray, God, just take them away. God says, no, you're going to have to go out in the field and move them. And uh, some rocks are bigger than others. So we had been so blessed by it. Sam and his buddies, as he became an Eagle Scout, and they put up a uh, swing set out here, and some ruffians and ragged muffin on the south side broke it. And uh, so for the safety of kids, we thought, okay, we need to take that down. You didn't have to use that much cement, Sam. <laughs> I'm just saying. Isn't that right, Gage? I was not Gage, uh, Cam and Matt. They dug that stuff up big rocks, and moved them. And uh, I said, did you pick them up? They said, no, some of them we just had to scoot. <laughs> but you couldn't leave them there. So you, you take the rocks out, but you can't just leave holes, right? Because somebody's going to come along with a mower, and it's not going to be good. So there are rocks in your life. There are Damaged places and damaged things and wrong beliefs. I believe rocks in your life are wrong beliefs. And uh, you say, okay, I need to get those out of there. So when you take them out, they leave voids. And so what are you going to fill the void with? We got some good dirt, didn't we, Mike? Got a wheelbarrow, and they went over and they filled all those holes and smoothed it. Now those rocks aren't, aren't there, and the seed can grow. The seed can grow. And, and I feel like that in our lives, we are in a continual mode of big dirt rocks, big things like that. Thirdly, the third type of soil, it says, the cares of the world. The seed that fell among the thorns stand for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, secondly, riches, thirdly, pleasures, and they do not mature. They get choked by those things. I think all of us have a heart to want to become mature, godly people. Yes. Amen? Amen? And you make that choice and you take that initial step but there's stuff that God's going to ask you along the way. Rocks that need to be removed, and then as you begin to grow. So, I saw somebody send me a picture of their garden this week. They obviously listened in the sermon last week. And I responded, you know, good seed, good soil. But I left one thing out. At some point, you have to weed. My father... Loved gardens. He he wanted you know he he wanted to be a farmer. I had shared that, but since he couldn't be a farmer, he got the biggest garden he possibly could. And uh, and in about a month from now, the tomatoes would be there, the carrots would be there, the zucchini. I hated zucchini. He's not here anymore. I might have one time taken a stick and, and knocked all the limbs off it. And he thought the hail got it. <laughs> and I never owned up. I would like to repent of that right now. <laughs> he would say to us, my brother and I, he'd say, why don't we go out and weed the garden? Yeah. Weed. I thought it was French. Because we did not mean him and us. It meant us. I mean, it meant my brother and I were going to go out and we were going to, whatever you do in the, in the dirt, you know, and, and you're, you got a hoe and you, you're trying not to cut the other stuff down and, and sometimes you got to pull it and, and all the stuff. And I think about, because if you want a good crop, you got to deal with the weeds and stuff. In fact, uh, with the whole farm ar arena, the, the soybeans, if you have a lot of weeds in your soybeans, they're going to dock you. You're not going to make near the money that you could have because you had weeds in there. 
Will the weeds, can the weeds kill our walk with God? Absolutely. Absolutely. So how do we become that fourth one? B to become the fourth one. And, and as a pastor, I, go, I watch people come in, I see them get saved, I see the stuff, and I can almost predict if they're going to make it or not. I'm not prophetic, none of that, but I just watch how it works. Watch how it works. If you're going to make it for God, there's some certain steps you got to take. Okay. Certain steps. A, you got to you got to start being in church. People who don't go to church tend not to make it in the walk with God. So that's 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 one of the stones in the foundation because he talked about you know you get the whole planting seeds, but you also he he shared about the one who built his house on the stone and the one who built his house on the sand. Being in church is one of those anchor points. Not just being in church, not just showing up and coming occasionally, but building relationships. Yeah. It's like putting out roots. The better the root system, the stronger you are. In fact, sometimes when corn is planted and it rains a lot early, it doesn't put its roots down deep enough so that when it gets dry later, it shrivels up because it doesn't have the root system. Jesus knew about that. He understood. He was talking about that. So, what about... So go to church. Secondly, learn what the Word of God is all about. Amen. How well do you know the Word of God? Because that's our foundation. That's our baseline. So when people get saved, our, 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 our goal here is that, that we get them in the right soil. When we bought some trees for the new land out there, they said the soil is kind of uh, okay. So they dug a little bigger hole, they put a little better soil in there, and then they said, if you'll pay us an extra 50 bucks, we'll put this miracle stuff in there. And then you get a two-year warranty instead of a one-year warranty. Do you think we did that? We did, Bernie. <laughs> yes, we did. Lack of faith over here. He just understands how cheap I am. <laughs> Thank God we did that because we had one or two die. Even with the best job, the skip was out there watering people. I mean, there was a bunch of people who watered those trees. And as we drove by them today, they're all coming out. They're budding out. Those things are happening. And my wife said, we don't have to water them anymore, do we? No, because their root system has taken. They're good. They're good. In fact, uh, I was just thinking how that uh, we, we put a thing alongside the front of our house. A little where you put plants. No, just a plant, I don't know. Whatever it is. It says about that wide it goes along the front of the house. Yeah, I don't know. You guys figure it out. I don't know what it's called. But I do know that we want stuff to grow there. So we got black soil. So, so we had good soil that we put in there. And then we got Evelyn to come to put plants in there. <laughs> and then we're going to put some black paper that will keep the bad stuff from go growing. We're going to put some of that stuff to, to kind of keep down the weeds and all that stuff. Because the weeds will grow in your life. And that, he talks about that. People who get distracted, they get choked by life worries. We don't have to worry. We have a God who's in charge, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What are you worrying about? Does he got your back? Yes. 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 He's got you. He loves you. So you don't have to worry. And then they get worried about riches. you got to put God as the priority. And you need to be in church. You say, well, i got to work. Pray that God will give you another job. Because you need to be in a fellowship of believers if you're going to make it. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? 
Godliness with contentment is great gain. You say, but pastor, I, 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 I got a really big pickup that I traded off. Get something different. I got a really... When the stuff you have keeps you from your walk with God, you need to get rid of it. That's a stone, that's a boulder, that's a weed that's going to destroy you, that's going to distract you, that's going to point you in the wrong direction. Even the very best things can send you to hell. And then the last one, it says, and the pleasures, the joys, the fun things. Perfectly good things. The things that we're all about. But if they get out of perspective, if they get out of the, of the right place, if they begin to consume you, they will slowly choke out your walk with God. What's the signs that your walk with God is getting choked out? Well, you stop reading the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you want to grow with God and put down the really great roots and have all that stuff, we have growth God up there. Up there on Sunday mornings at 9.30, and you say, well, we don't have Sunday school right now, so uh, what about my kids? You know what? We will have, we, starting next Sunday, we have kid care. So if you want to come to grow with God, we will overcome whatever obstacle needs to take place so that you can be a part of that. Because part of that, that's where you're going to get your foundation. That's where you're going to have the Word of God incorporated in you. And you know what? Sometimes you say, well, you know, I did that. Sometimes we need a little rain, too. Because your soil gets dry. Even the best soil gets dry, doesn't it? We need the Holy Spirit. To water. That's why we come when we worship. Yes, amen. Yes, so people, they stop. They start. They stop reading their Bible. They stop finding. They start finding other things to do besides church. They stop hanging around godly people. Their language starts to change, and pretty soon, I don't see them anymore. And I'll see them out. And they'll say, hey, yeah, Pastor. Man, I've been thinking about you. Do you know what's paid with good intentions? Some of you have been around a while. The road to hell. I had good intentions. Folks, you actually have to do it. You have to take the steps to get and to grow. To grow, to say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow God to run that harrow over my life. Because sometimes we are so proud and proud makes, pride makes you hard. And it makes you unwilling to listen to people around you. You think you got it all figured out? Well, I'm just telling you, none of us have it all figured out except for God. Until we run to Him, we are just spinning our wheels, wasting our time. We need Him to run through there and to, to break up and to make it more fallow so that the seed of His Word can sink in and begin to grow. And then if there's a rock or a boulder of unforgiveness or whatever... We need to say, God, help me to haul this out. Help me to break this up. We get some really big chunks of somebody uh, has a sledgehammer and some spare time because I ain't picking them up <laughs> to break those up. They're on earth now. You can break them up. You know, those of you, how many of you guys do gardens? Do you do salsa and stuff? Because if so, I'd appreciate you typing on that as well. <laughs> that's not, that's just like not even right, is it? Passion's causing pride, just meandering. Do you just weed your garden one time? All summer? No. no. It's like a weekly thing, isn't it? Every week you got to say, okay, there's a weed growing up. There's something growing up. There's something that I don't want in my life. 
there's something I don't want in my garden because there's a lot of volunteer stuff that wants to grow up in your garden. But it's going to kill the good stuff. And pretty soon it's just going to be a, a patch of weeds <coughs> and junk and crud. And he talks about, but the last ones, but those, but the seed on good soil stands for those with noble and good hearts and actually who follow through, who hear the word of God, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. You see, you're going to have some struggles in your walk with God. You're going to have some struggles in life, even after you become a Christian. I know that's not probably popular theology, but Jesus said that's how it's going to be. You're going to have troubles, you're going to have battles, you're going to have struggles. And if you're the rocky soil, you're not going to make it. If you're the, if you allow the weeds to come in, but those who take care of the soil and kill the weeds and do the stuff, at some point, you're going to have a harvest. Right? Amen. Amen. Some of you, are, you put your seeds in the ground and nothing's come up yet. Right now, this time of year, you got seeds in the ground. Or maybe you've got them inside in your house in those little boxes. And they're poked up with your, you're afraid to put them outside yet because I heard it could snow tomorrow. <laughs> you're saying, Pastor, well, how would you know that? I don't know. I'm just making it up. I figure I'll be as close as the weather, man. <laughs> <laughs> got to take care of those seeds. And when those, when those plants are small, you have to be careful. And even when they're bigger, if you hit them with a stick multiple times, they will bear no fruit. Now, I eat okra now. Fry it. It's okay. Bread it, fry it. How are you in your walk with God? You see, the boulders and the weeds are a lot about obedience. If you're not walking in obedience, that's a boulder and that's a weed that's going to choke out. Disobedience keeps you from be, receiving all that God has for you. He's saying, hey, hey, it's time for a checkup. It's time for some weeding. It's time for some stuff to be taken care of. On the far side of this little garage over here, we've got these weeds that grow every year. We tree weed things. Yeah. Jerry was over there cutting away. And then my thing. There's a bunch of people who worked on those over the years. Because we never, we cut them, but we never killed them. This year, we put some tore down on there. We took a little toothbrush and brushed it in. And next year, when we have the cleaning day, they will be no more. Because it will kill it. When you begin to cut the things out of your life, and then allow the Holy Spirit, the Word of God to it, stuff starts dying. And then you're able to see the good props and the good things. So that when you're old, you're able to see your children and your children's children serving God. And living for God. And when you get to heaven, you will have people in heaven because you bore fruit. And one of the passages says 30, 60, and 100 fold. 30, 60, and 100 fold. But to bear fruit. To start now cleaning your garden, planting the seed, and doing the stuff so that you can have fruit, fruit that lasts, so that you can touch lives and change them forever. This summer, we're going to work on getting Sunday school teachers to to train so that when we start Sunday school again this fall, you'll be prepared, you'll be ready, you'll be the best teacher that those kids possibly could have. But you can't just show up. You've got to be trained. You've got to say, okay, and you've got to set the example. They're watching you. You know, I talked about Pastor Mallory a couple weeks ago and about that, that person who shared in the youth group. And... Uh, Shared all about God and them for God, and then they were driving somewhere afterwards, and she's riding with her, and the lady's just swearing like a sailor. And she's like, she said, I was so confused. 
If you're going to be a volunteer, you have to say, okay, God, change me. Change my words. Change my thoughts. Change my heart. God, I want to be more like you. Shape me and form me, whatever it takes. Bow our heads this morning. Good soil. Some of you have started on the journey. You have started on the journey. And you're understanding there's some obstacles, there's some rocks, there's some weeds. Before you can deal with the rocks and the weeds, you've got to start the journey. You've got to allow the seed to come into your heart. I've just been praying this week. God, let there be open hearts. Let there be hungry people who want to have a God encounter today, who have not hardened their hearts. And they've allowed the Holy Spirit to prepare for a life-changing event. This morning, if you're here, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today's your day. Today is the time for you to allow Jesus to forgive your sin. For we are all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all, we're all a shipwreck without Him. We desperately need His help. This morning, if you'd like to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and forgive your sins, I just invite you to slip up your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. I'm not looking for God. I, I'm living in straight up disobedience, and I need Jesus to forgive me and give me a new start, a fresh start. Just like Art and Alex did last week, they came up and said, I want to go with Jesus. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. If you're here this morning, this is that time. Slip up your hand, say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. Heavenly Father, Jesus, Jesus. Don't harden yourself. Don't, don't allow the Satan to harden your heart. Because you know, the more times you sit in a service and you hear an altar call and and the Holy Spirit speaks to you. The more times that happens, the harder your heart gets. The easier it is for you the next time to say, you know what, I'm good enough. Which is a lie from the pit of hell. And it'll harden you to where it just doesn't sink in anymore. Water off the duck's back. You might say, well, i got some stuff in my life I need to... No, you need Jesus, and then that stuff in your life will get taken care of. This morning, if you want to ask Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior, I just invite you to slip up your hand. Say, that's me. That's me. The Word of God is that seed. The biggest share of this sermon this morning, look up. We'll see you guys. I don't care how long you've been in your walk with God. If you don't, on a regular basis, pick up the stones and kill the weeds. You won't make it. You won't make it. Jesus and the Heavenly Father want everyone to be saved. And when people walk away, there was a young man who came to Jesus. Jesus shared with him. 
this was an individual thing for him. He said, go sell it. You have it. Come follow me. And the young man who was a church young man, a religious young man, he said, I can't do that. And he turned and walked away. And Jesus was sad. He was broken hearted because there was a, a young man who allowed the riches of life to keep him from eternal life. I don't care what else you do. If you don't know Jesus, you're lost. You can do all the good things in the world and help all the people, but unless you know Jesus, you're lost. And unless you take care of that garden, you're not going to make it. But we, I as a pastor, we as this church, are going to do our best to help you. We will come and dump dirt on you. See if you're paying attention still. <laughs> I, I'm even need a good bag of black dirt dumped on you. <laughs> and all the mothers said no. <laughs> I want to see you grow. I want to see you make it for Jesus. So I'm going to do everything I can to love you, to encourage you, and occasionally say, hey, what's more important to you? This pleasure or this riches or Jesus? This week I asked you to go home and say, what's, what's the stones that are in my life? And what's the weeds? Maybe you need to ask your friend, is there something in my life that you see hurting my walk with God? And then I just encourage you to be the old God. See, Alex and Art, that's only three letters in that name, by the way, Art. We laughed about that all week long. You know, Art got saved and then I couldn't remember his name. It says it's art, art. It's the only three letters. <laughs> I'm like he fits well here. <laughs> they showed up with growth God today. They did their first lesson. And they're starting to walk with God. Because that's the steps. And maybe you've been in church forever and you're like, you know what? I need something besides just Sunday morning. I need something Wednesday night or or Sunday at 9.30, the Grow of God class. And, and if you want to be a member, that's part of the process anyhow. We want you to be a member. We want you to be godly, on fire for people, and to have great fruit. To have fruit. It's not just about making it to heaven, so you take a week. Let's stand this morning.
that you broke up the hardness of my life and my heart. And that seed took root and continues to grow as I do the things you ask me to do as I walk in obedience, Jesus. And you bring freshness and newness and all the, the miracles that you alone can do. God, I pray for each one who is here this morning that they will have a hunger and a passion after you. They'll want to be in your word and in your house. Jesus, give us a, a fresh love. Lord, thank you in your name. Amen.